Hello and welcome to Tribe Topper. In this video, you are going to learn about scalars and vectors. Let's talk about the vector and scalar quantities first of all. Scalar quantities are those that have magnitude alone or just a size. That means they have a numerical value but no direction. So, for example, if I talk of uh, distance, time, speed, these are all scalar quantities. They do not have any directions. They are just measured and we give them a numerical value along with a unit but no direction. If we talk of vector quantities, what's the difference now? These are the quantities that have both magnitude and direction. So, we can't use ordinary rules of algebra. Like for adding scalars, we can use ordinary rules of algebra to add them. Like what is the total distance traveled? If it is 8 kilometers plus another distance of 5 kilometers plus another distance of 7 kilometers. So, you get total 20 kilometers. But in vector quantities, you cannot simply add or subtract by these ordinary rules of algebra. We have to apply the laws of vectors because we need to take into account the direction. So, vectors are those quantities which have both magnitude and direction. So, the example here would be displacement. As you will know, distance has only direction, but displacement is distance travel plus in a specific direction. So, it is a vector quantity. Similarly, speed, it's a scalar quantity, like the speedometer of your car tells you the speed of the car right now is 80 kilometers per hour, but it doesn't tell you anything about the direction. But velocity is the distance traveled in a particular direction. So, we have to mention like somebody is traveling at 30 meters per second due east. So, then that makes it the velocity. So, it is a vector quantity. Let's see how we can add two vectors. Now, we have here there's a vector which is v1 and there's another vector v2. Suppose these are two velocities, we need to add them. Now, you can see they are not in the same direction. So, what do we do? So, there is one rule which is called the parallelogram law of vector. And the parallelogram law states that if two vectors are represented by the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram, then the diagonal of the parallelogram gives the resultant. So, now these two vectors, to add them, what will I do? I will try to adjust them, move a little bit parallel to each other, but join them and form a parallelogram. So, I'll move one vector. Say, I move this vector here and I draw a line parallel to the first vector, V1. And this one, I'll move it a little bit so that I can get a line at this angle. Now, the angle can be measured with the help of a protractor. So, at the same angle, we have to draw two more lines to complete the parallelogram. Right? So, with the help of a protractor, you'll be able to form the parallelogram. So, then the straight line drawn uh, from this point, which will join the diagonals, right? This is the diagonal which joins the opposite two points. That is called the diagonal and this is going to give you the resultant. So, we would say that if I say I have uh, this is V1 vector and this is V2 and these arrows indicate their directions, they both originate from A. So, A, B, C, D, we will finish off the parallelogram, then A, C diagonal gives the resultant vector. And we can also consider how to add them like V1, this is a vector parallel to it which is exactly same value and same direction, so V1. Therefore, what is my resultant vector AC equal to? I'll write, therefore, AC vector, which is the resultant vector or resultant velocity, that would be equal to vector V1 plus V2, but in the vector form. They are not literally added, right? There will be a vector sign on the top, but it doesn't mean that you have directly as the value to be V1 plus V2. For example, I can explain it to you with the help of a right angle triangle. So, let's see, for example, we have these two vectors which are to be added and they are at right angles to each other. So, right now, I know just the exact value is this is right angle. So, what was going to be my resultant? 
if I complete the square so or a parallelogram, this is the diagonal. And in this case, it's very easy to find the diagonal. So if I ask you the question here that if somebody has walked 3 kilometers due east and 4 kilometers due north, then is the displacement 7 kilometers? No. Because displacement is a vector quantity, for that we just need the shortest distance between the initial and final position. So my initial position is A, B crossing here and C is the final position. So displacement is the shortest distance AC and that is not at all equal to 7. The rule to find the displacement vector or the resultant vector for right angle, it's simple, you use the Pythagoras theorem. So for right angled vectors, the only thing you need to remember is that resultant vector is going to be square root of v1 square plus v2 square. That means in this particular case, my displacement is going to be 4 square plus 3 square. So that is 16 plus 9 which is 25. Therefore, I get the resultant velocity or resultant displacement in that case is 5 kilometers. So, this is how you can add two vectors when they are at right angles. The resultant is just the Pythagoras theorem applied gives you the hypotenuse. So, root of a square plus b square. This was specifically v1, v2. Otherwise, we can also say uh, if you have to find a vector, resultant vector v, you can say the two components a square plus b square. Right? This is how you add two vectors at right angles. Now, another very important concept here is resolving a vector. Now, let's say when you are carrying your luggage, you know how you are applying a force. Of course, you apply a force in this direction. Like if say this is your bag and you're holding it and you're trying to roll it. What do you have? This, you are applying a force at an angle, right? You are applying a force at an angle, theta. So at an angle theta with the ground. So, how this vector or this force comes into play? What? How does it impact your motion? So, what we will do is we will draw a straight line here which is your force vector. Now, we will split this force vector into two components. Why? Because you are applying a force at an angle theta to the ground. That means your force has to be resolved into two parts. This is your total resultant force you've applied. This will have two components. One fx component along the x-axis and one is fy component along the y-axis. Now, how do we find that? So, we are going to use simple trigonometric rules. If you remember, if I mark the triangle here, A, B and C. So, Fy and if I look at this line, BC, that is also numerically equal to Fy. So, I can say this is also Fy. Now, from the triangle, right angle triangle, we know Fx over f, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, is cos of theta. Therefore, what is my fx component? That is f times cos of theta. And similarly, fy over f is your opposite over hypotenuse, that is sine theta. So, we would say the vertical component is f sine theta. So, this splitting of vectors is very important and this comes into play every time you have a force or any vector at an angle. Whenever something is absolutely horizontal or absolutely vertical, you don't have to split it into components because that's simple going in one direction. But the moment you have it in plane, it's two directional, you have to split it into two components and you will see that you often use this whether it is the electric field or the forces and you will use this in projectiles also. So, for example, you will use it when you kick a football and in projectiles they'll say that the initial velocity is along the vector AC. So, you kicked the ball at an angle theta. So, your velocity that you will be considering here will not be V your initial velocity, u will take it to be, so generally we take u, sorry, so u, you, you will have to split it into two components, you have to 
break this motion into two parts. So you will first talk of the x components, which will be u x component, and that will be u cos theta. And you will have to talk of the y component, u y, which will be u sin theta. And the entire motion, you will split it into the horizontal and vertical components, and then solve it. Right, so you, this is how you resolve the components of a vector. I mean, resolve a vector into its components. So I hope it is clear how to add the vectors when they are at different angles, how to add the vectors in case of a right angle triangle or when they are at right angle to each other and how to resolve the vectors. That's all for this session. In the next video, you are going to learn about topic 2.1 from mechanics. Thank you.